Welcome to Escape This Podcast, a show that's a mix between tabletop role-playing and escape room puzzles. Every episode, an Someone. escape room is played. I was going to say we invite people on to play an escape room. That's not what's happening. But an escape room will be played. Usually, Danny writes a room and we have a guest on to solve it, but occasionally we have guest game masters come on and bring a game for us to play. And this whole start of this season is five in a row. At the time that this episode comes out, I will be deep into writing mode, not ready to record but right my now, own rooms mode. We're in solving mode and we are solving sure. the, I want to say, third yeah, room that so. we have from guest game master Matthijs Janssen. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. Thank you so much. So, uh, third time is the charm. We had uh, two terrible rooms. Let's try to make this one good. <laughs> so, we've done, we did one where we split up. And had to like teams, it was like a it team, was team work, building, team building experience. And we had a, a, a long sort of bomb solving time based ta- time. Yeah. Like where we were spending time to so, do actions and all this sort of stuff. So what we've come to know you for is like interesting mechanics. Does this room, no, no spoilers, but does this room have a shiny new mechanic that we'll have to get used to? Or are you just going straight up and good classic escape room? It is going to be for sure. Like an interesting mechanic. Okay. I have seen this being used once or twice, but I don't think there was an entire room around it. So, so I've tried to base the entire room around sort of one central weird mechanic this time. So uh, Amazing. let's see if that happens. Uh, Danny, you said you're going to be in writing mode later. Can I put something? Can I put down something? Huh? I'd like you to write a room and for all the guests, who, for the guests that are arriving to play the room, we set, we set up and say, this room has a really interesting mechanic, mm-hmm. right? Like it's a really strange mechanic, like it's a really weird mechanic. Uh-huh. You're going to love it. It's got a really odd mechanic for this room. I'm not room. good at weird mechanics, right? but okay. Don't worry. Because then they get into the room, bog standard normal escape room, They're but it's set in for a it garage nothing. and he's like, ah, ah Jimbley Jew. A weird mechanic. I love to fix cars with my magical wands. You're like, what an interesting mechanic. I can't argue with this. But also, you better argue with this. I don't want this to. I don't want this to happen, uh, <laughs> Matthias. Every time we have guests on, we ask the same two questions. We've asked you these questions before, so mm-hmm. we'll ask for updates. Uh, this is an escape room show. Any updates to your escape room experience since last you were on? I've done only two two additional since last time, which I think has been about a year. So that's yeah. pretty cool. I did one in an underground mine. Uh, Ooh, which was actually, mechanic. this was this used to be a mine, an active mine, but then it got sort of decommissioned and turned into an escape room. So it was actually really quite big. There was lots of sort of yeah. hallways and tunnels you could go into. There wasn't a ton of stuff there, but like at some point you needed to walk down a tunnel, which was very barely lit. And you're like, am I going in the right direction? <laughs> yeah. Am, am I going to end up falling into a mine shaft? How excited must those owners have been when they got to be able to do that? Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. So that was very cool. Uh, wonderful. Well, then the other element of this show is it's escape rooms in a sort of a tabletop role-playing style. And are there any updates to your tabletop role-playing experience since last year on the show? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so there's a couple of things that are exciting that I did. Um, I finished and abandoned one campaign since last we met. Nice. And I fi- started and finished uh, an entire thing that I, that I designed for myself uh, as like a short-term 10-episode thing that was very exciting. Oh, congratulations. Well, we should get into the room. Uh, I know you've said there's like a, a, an, a, an odd mechanic. Will it become emergent through gameplay or do you need to like prep us on how to get going before we start? There is, I guess, like the one sort of thing I can get away is you're going to have to crack a code and all of the puzzles are going to help you, give you information towards cracking this, this oh, code. That's so nice. That's the one piece of information I so think about, like everything, every piece of information might potentially be relevant for the final solution, if that makes sense. I love it. I love it. Right. Well, let's get going. After the recent earthquakes, a... Once in time, opportunity has presented itself. A ancient Atlantean temple has opened up. This earthquakes happen about once every 100 years, so it's crucial that you that they're open now, and then they're going to only be open for a very short while before the earthquakes collapse under the seabed once again. As you arrive on a tiny island that you haven't seen before, uh, you find Professor Billington. No relation. Uh, 
you find Professor Bellator standing outside, clutching his arms, like, oh, oh, thank you so much for helping me out. Um, I can't really, I can't really continue. I've just hurt my arm too badly. Sure. I'm, I'm so glad you guys can help me out to finish what I've started. I've been researching this Atlantean civilization for like ages and ages, and now I finally have a chance to translate all their secrets. And oh, it's so bad that I can't continue anymore. Can you guys like help me out and finish the golden door? I was so close to cracking it. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. Translating stuff, I am very much in. We'll, we'll do it. I, look, I don't believe you. I think you've just become scared. Uh, and your arms no, are perfectly no, fine. No. Oh, my arm. Oh, it hurts so bad. Oh. Yeah, see, mm, I don't trust you. Um, <laughs> I do. I trust you wholeheartedly. I am in. But yeah, we'll do it, man. I love Atlantis. And what he's going to do is he's going to give you a summary of his notes. Nice. Send you the picture right now. Oh, nice. We get the summary of the notes. <gasps> this is what I've been able to make out. It's very short term. I wish I could have stayed longer, but my arm oh, it just, it just hurts oh, so yeah, badly. Oh, poor arms. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my, my translation. So I hope it will be of some use to opening the door that I've been, oh, I've been so close to opening. Okay, I've been so close. How confident are you with these translations? These ones pretty locked in. Do you feel certain? 100%. I feel pretty certain. I know that this is... Um, Except for the oh, yeah, there's mark. one that does have a question mark. I will just yeah. one, I'll describe this for people in a second, but yes, there is one that he's not certain about, obviously. Yeah, it doesn't translate to English one to one because it's more like um, like a like a Chinese or like a hieroglyphs where yeah, it's, it's like very pictographic. Just more like pictographic, more like um, loose translation or like a meaning translation. Mm. But you guys are smart people. I'm sure you'll figure it out. And with it. that, he'll sort of like he he sets himself down on uh, on a nearby stump, still clutching his arm, still trying to gather his notes or whatever. And he sort of sends you down uh, down these enormous stairs, it's kind of like stairs, more like an uneven tunnel that is opened up. You walk down a little bit for like a good 10, 15 minutes, disappearing, disappearing into in the dark. It gets darker and darker until suddenly you end up in like a little, surprisingly well lit cavern. There is five alcoves all around you and a large central golden door. And in front of that is a dais that's slightly raised up from the ground. And there's five little streams going towards all uh, ah. sides as a way to sort of like connect the central dais with all these little five little, the five little alcoves. Gosh. I'm putting three alcoves on the left and two on the right. Hmm. This is some classic sort of uh, video game setup. I am feeling very video game right and now, I'm and I am happy. Excited. I was about to spoil puzzles from another <laughs> video game. I assume I have the exact same but thought. I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not spoiling it. If anyone, if anyone is like, oh wow, in the post show, door, we you may were steal some puzzles. We may have to give we'll, some spoiler flares. We won't. Maybe we, we'll we won't spoil. Some people might know what I was going to spoil. I hope good. You don't. Good. It's surprisingly well lit. There's bugs crawling all over the place. There is uh, some faint lights on the ceiling of as illuminated moss dimly lit the room. And the one thing that does stand out first and foremost is the enormous golden door. One would think. It's, it's hard to miss, really. Surprise you <laughs> haven't looked at it. Surprise you look at the bugs before you looked at the golden door. <laughs> Here we are. And on the door is an inscription that looks something like this. Ooh. Oh yeah. All right. So I'm going to take a second here. I want to. I want to go back. So for people, people listening along at home, you can see images as we collect them in the show notes below. Looking at this note that we got from Mr. Fake Arms, <laughs> Professor Fake Arms. Sorry, thank Professor you. Fake Arms. So we're talking about like a language with it has like a like an ideogram sort of a language. They yeah. have symbols that represent ideas, and we have here six symbols that he sort of identified. The first one. Looks like a, it's just a swirl. It's it's like a. It's what I draw when I'm trying to depict wind. It'd be like if you drew just like a, a very tall ellipse, but let the top corners cross over and just keep going out. I suppose it's, it's like, a loop. It's an eight, but you really messed up the top. The top half just <laughs> disintegrated. But what it represents it's is it's a water. six and a backward six in one. Yeah, it's that's a, what it's it a is. little loop, and it represents the concept of water. The next one is yeah. building. Represented by two parallel lines. Mm -hmm. This is also a litmus, or, or um, what do you call this? Uh, Rorschach test. Rorschach, Rorschach test. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, the next one is uh, people, which is made out of my parents fighting. Um, <laughs> no, the next one is people. And people is... Oh, that's is, weird. I thought they were kissing. Oh, people is like, you know those uh, pictures people show you where they're like, is this a vase or is it two it faces is. kissing? It is. It's two faces but slash a vase. super simplified. It's basically a backward C, C, and a C and then a forward C. But it's, yeah, it's almost like two faces kissing or a big vase. Next, we have the symbol for animals. It's a little paw. Which is definitely a paw print. It's a little paw print. It's got one big. But it's only got three toes. Yeah, one big padded paw and then three little toe pads above it. Uh, The next one indicates time and it's like a big circle with a little circle sitting at the top inside. It looks like an olive. It looks like an olive. It looks exactly like an olive. I was going to say it looks like an Amongus but with no legs. Um, (laughs) And then the final one, which he isn't quite sure about, he's labelled it a mount, but with a question mark. A mount? A mount. And it's a circle with a big backwards three in it that indis- that separates the left side from the right side, sort of like a yin-yang it's as if, kind of a thing. It, to me it is, you know, when people draw phases of the moon and they will draw the whole circle mm. and then they will draw the shaded bit yeah. of moon over it. It's like that, but with, as you say, a backwards three instead of a nice... A little moon curve, shape. Yeah. So, yeah, the left side is slightly pointy. The right side is being pointed into. Uh, so that but, yeah, might so it's a split be down a the middle. Related. And it might be a mount, but he's not sure. Yeah. And now we can see a big door which has symbols that are reminiscent of these symbols. All right. So we've got a bunch of symbols inside a big circle. Yes. And this circle has, has the radiance. five uh, streams yes. coming towards it. So is this what we're seeing on the di- on the on the the raised dais in front of the door, or is it on the door itself? So I kind of just combined the images for for easy sake. Um, nice. This is this is the dais, but the symbols are the things you see on the door, just to okay. Okay, I love it. So we can see the dais, and we also have a reference for these these symbols. There are six of these symbols, like a column of three, and then another column of three. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna draw it. Or I know that we've got them. But if I'm you gonna prefer, draw them three rows of two. Mm. None of them are, ex- are the same as what he has translated, but they have n- elements. Noticeably, the top right symbol, to me, is Looks like water inside two parallel lines. So I want to say it's like a well or a fountain or something, like a water building. It is now uh, the lines that we the parallel lines that we got for building were reasonably were close, close these together. These ones are a bit more spread. Separated. Who knows if that matters? It could just be how these symbols yeah. end up put together yeah, when like, they get combined. To me, that's water inside building. So it's like a water building. Yeah. Oh, we've um, got one of the symbols here is like two backwards threes together. But with no circle around no. them. One of them is a C and a backwards C, but not at all in the same no. formation. Yeah, it's people, but people. instead of two, like instead of the, the flat parts facing each other, the points of the Cs face each other and they're offset with one higher than the other. So it's like a, a perversion of the symbol for people. And look at this olive symbol. It does not look like an olive anymore. Yeah, there's something that feels like time, but instead of having one circle at the top, of the of the big circle, it's got two circles at the top and another circle at the bottom left and another circle at the bottom right. So it's like a perversion of the time symbol. Oh wow! And then, what do you think the bottom left one is? Is that another weird olive or something? Maybe it's like, or maybe that's yeah, a weird it looks amount. Like if you took the time symbol, but instead of having a little circle at the top, you just like dragged it all the way U. out. It's like a big U in the middle. And then the last one is oh, wild. Boy. It's an animal symbol at the top, followed by. Underneath it, a bunch of sevens. Yeah, like eight sevens or little like corners could like represent a yeah. corner or something. So I'm not quite sure. I don't know what any of these symbols mean. I love it. And I would assume by checking out the other five rooms, we'll get more information. It's probably for the best. Yeah. But now um, everybody's on the same page. Are we in a position to start checking out rooms? Uh, yeah, there's the five little alcoves. alcoves. Uh, I can describe them in more detail uh, generally, or you can just go to one and I'll tell you what let's it is. Let's just go one after the other, I reckon. Let's, let's assign them from, from, from left to right. We'll call them one, two, three, four, five. You can change whatever order that is in your head. Let's go to alcove one. So this is a set of three sort of enormous hourglasses. And these have weird shapes in the middle, sort of between the two glass bulbs, if that's how you want to think about it. There's a button with a symbol written on it, and there's a piece of wood sort of going through the middle, like an um, open line, if that makes sense, or like an open tube, that's a better word. And there's a piece of paper stuck on one end. It's like fluttering a little bit in the wind, and it's it's so close it really wants to shoot out, but like it's being blocked by the sort of columns of sand that uh, block this little uh, tube. 
Okay. So now on each of the three hourglasses, there is a buttony thing to press in between the two bulbs? Yes. Are the, are the, are the three hourglasses... Are they completely separate from one another, or do they like? Yes. Is it three? Okay, so there's like a top and a bottom, with its own button and tube next to it. Okay. Exactly. Um, exactly. And but only only the one piece of paper. Yes, only the one piece of paper. Does, so is there? There's a tube that goes through all three hourglasses. So like I couldn't pick yeah. one up and take it away because it's attached. No, to these it. are very uh, attached to the wall. Interesting. Oh, okay. So if you press the leftmost button, for example, sand will start flowing from, from the top all the way to the bottom. And as soon as the bottom one fills up, it flips over, like almost instantly. It's very, okay. Ooh, very nice. quickly. And as you see uh, like that hourglass being empty, you see the paper piece of paper just flittering like a little bit more, like it wants to move. But then as soon as the thing flips up, it goes back to its... So if we could state. empty all three at once, perhaps, mm. then, the, then there'll be no sand keeping the paper in place gotcha, and it will be gotcha. immediately removable. That's what I... Now, you said the buttons had symbols on them. Do they have the same symbol on each button or are they different? I, I sent you the picture. Oh, wow. They really are weird shapes. Oh, these are weird shapes. Yeah, so the first no one... No wonder they... I'm sure that like, explains why they pour differently. Yeah, so the first one is a big triangle, like coming to a point at the centre and then... Underneath is a flipped version of that triangle. Yeah, so just like a really pointy normal hourglass, yeah. I suppose. The second one is two circles. So the top bulb is circular, the bottom bulb is circular. And the third one, it's two... I don't even know. It's not a semicircle because it's it's like a semi-arc. Um, no, there's a word for that. I've forgotten what it is right now. It's like if you took a semicircle and then you took a smaller bit out of the middle. So that the two annulus. Of... I think it's an annulus. Oh, that, that helps. Everybody at home, it's an annulus. Right, well, a half um, annulus. It's a half annulus, everybody. Uh, and so the bottom is the same, meaning that together they sort of look like an S. Yeah. They've created sort of an S shape between the top and the bottom. Danny, would you like to describe the different pictures on the button? Yeah, these button pictures look a little bit familiar. They are all olives, but all different types of olives. Mm. So each one has the big circle, but the little circles are all doing something quite different. So the leftmost just has four little circles inside the big circle, one at the top, one at the bottom, one at the left, one at the right. Like if I had a clock edges. and I decided to circle inside the, the yeah. clock, like where the 12, the 6, the sort of the 3 and the 9, maybe yeah. the Yeah, yeah, that looks better. Right. Now the middle one actually quite similar it almost looks like you've circled those same numbers again maybe a little offset but some of them have like multiple circles going on like some of them are more concentric than others yeah it looks like the bottom and the right have two circles instead of one yeah yeah but the top and the left still have one circle meanwhile the final one the annulus one Again, has these four circles, but three of them this time are double circled. The 12 o'clock, the 3 o'clock, and the 6 o'clock. Interesting. And the, and the 9 is still circled once. So, now, can we pragmatically, like, if we're trying to think, like, oh, what amount of time do these time signatures represent? Is there anything that's stopping us from just being like, I'm going to hold the button and I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4 to see how long one of them is? You can try, but it's hard to focus in this place. Yeah, like sure. This. Yeah, yeah. There's a little you... dripping water that's <laughs> not regular and it keeps making me miscount. Well, I would say the first thing to do mm -hmm. is we can figure out relative like, timing. Can we start all three of them at the same time? I press oh, two, Danny presses see. one. Which is faster. And we just see the order in which they, they finish. Okay. So the leftmost finishes by far the quickest. A bit later, the middle one finishes, and finally the rightmost one finishes. Right. More circles equals more time. Makes sense. Was that the... I, I've already forgotten from the symbols that the professor gave us. Mm. Was that a symbol for time? Time was this was like a circle with a circle at the top. So it's like his... It looks like his kind of abstracted version of this concept. Yeah. Weirdly, the one on the um, door doesn't have all four corners. It only has... No, it looks more like 12, 4, and 8, possibly. Yeah, something like that. 12, 4, 8, or 12, 5, 7, or something like that. Like, the things that are circled are slightly different. Is there any chance that we have, like, nailed this right away, and it is clock position related, and we can use those numbers to help us out? Oh, interesting. So what, like, it would mean, like, the first one might be... Is, I mean, is 12, 12, or is 12, like, 0? Good qu Good question. Like, certainly that would mean that if it's just a single circle means you add that number on, 
a double means you add that on twice or something. Yeah. Of yeah, similar effect. Be. So like the first one with all four represented is if 12 is zero, uh, it would be three 18. plus six plus nine, and 18. Not 30. It's either 18 or 30. And then the second one would be like, we don't know what to do about the fact that it's 18 or 30 for anybody listening at home. We don't, I don't have a second step of this plan. The next one has a double three and a double six. So it could potentially be just plus nine more. So 27 yeah. or 39. It's 27 or 39. And then the next one is... Well, I don't think it can be it can't zero be, then. Yeah, you're right. It can't be zero because we're doubling it here on the three. Mm. So it's got to be 12. So let's ignore the 18, the 27. Yeah, I've crossed them out. 30, 39, and then another 12. So 51? 51, 51. They may represent those as units of time if we add them up like clock faces. But do the ancient Atlanteans have clocks? It's a good they may question. Have. I think the 12-hour like, time system is... Ancient Babylonians. So. And plussing was arbitrary on our decision. There could have been timesing involved. There could have been squaring involved oh, to no. be extra horrifying. 12 Who knows? to the power of three, to the power of six, to the power of nine. It's crazy Atlanteans. Lots of things could have been going on. I don't think the Atlanteans were that good at math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they were, their cities would still be here, dummies. Nice engineering. That's all we know about the Atlanteans. Yeah, primitive, primitive folk. All we know about Atlanteans is their buildings can't last without falling into the sea. Okay, so if we take it to be that, if we take it to match clock positions, we have 30, 39, 51. Mm. All right, how do you do these without actually doing a proper time count and just being practical about it? Practical skills, I'm sure everyone knows by now, is not really my expertise. How would you test your hypothesis about what those numbers mean in terms of time like how much more exactly. time do you think that the right one is compared to the leftmost one for example? yeah oh well the right one is um 21 more 21 seconds more so not quite double is what we've got so what we have got is that the first one took a little chunk of time the second one we currently have as let's call it nine seconds later. And then the third one, 12 seconds after that. So the difference between the gap between one and two is a little bit shorter than the gap between two and three at this stage. Sure. Don't know if that's actually true yet. I suppose we don't. All right, Billy, press buttons and see what happens. Okay. I press one and three. So what's happened is they've, you flipped them over and uh, one empty uh, quite quickly and then three empties. Quite a bit later. If you, what if you, you press, you, we press one and three, mm -hmm. but as soon as one runs out, we press it again. It immediately flips over and three still has not finished emptying out before uh, the, the first one has, has emptied okay. for the second time. There we go. We've got some more information now. So it's not just the plussing that we've done. Our, okay. ar our arbitrary plussing. Yeah, because doesn't work. like we would have assumed that was 60 compared to 51, but it isn't true. Two, yeah, yeah exactly. the first one fill, finishes twice mm -hmm. in the time it takes the third one to... Exactly. Do two and three finish at different times? Yes. If you like, yeah, let, okay. let everything empty out again, you pass two and three together, two empties out before three does. Should we do just the same thing again? Uh, but with one and two? Yeah, give it a shot. Yeah, okay. Let's see if we can get... Like, if we do one and two, I know mm -hmm. that two takes longer than, than one. Mm -hmm. what, if we, what if we try and run the first one twice? Uh, doesn't quite make it, but you're getting close. Interesting. So what finishes first? The second one or... or the or second one two? finishes before the first two. First okay, so, so even the second one is twice as much as the first one. Interesting. It's like more than twice as much as the first one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our, yeah, so our counts are completely wrong and we can ignore them. So why would that... Okay. So if I have a circle at one, like the top, the bottom, the left, and the right, mm -hmm. if I have double circles on the right and the bottom, compare, and, and also still circles at the top, that's more than twice as much. That's kind of wild. If you look at the um, example given in his notes, mm -hmm. it's a single circle. And if you look at the example yeah. given on the golden on the door, days, Yeah, the door, it has three. It like, has three. Yeah. It is round. It does not not necessarily mean clock. No, um, it clearly isn't no. it just a clock, which makes yeah. sense. So, like, they shouldn't really understand what a modern clock looks like, and is. They used Atlantean clocks, which were triangular. Um, 
These all have four circles. How do how do two and three compare when if we try like I assume that if we try to do flip two, a, a single three will be shorter than two twos, would yes, be my guess, but we don't will. know that. Okay. Yeah, that's true. You you press two and three together, two runs out before three. If you press two a second time, three does end up finishing before the second one, the middle one finishes up for the second time. But they don't line up very well so far. Is there any, if we have three going, do the, if we just keep running one over and over again, is the, do they line up at any point? They do. After the first one empties, empties for the fourth time, the third one appears to be empty just at the exact same moment. And then they okay. both put it back up. So we know, you know, I shouldn't call them one, two, three. I'm going to call them A, B, C. I've called them X, Y, Z. So oh, four X equals Z. Yeah. We got X, we got Y, we got Z. Okay. So we're just finally on a track math. where we can learn stuff. This is every time we do a Nancy Drew, we get the same thing. We try to do like know. puzzle solving stuff, and then it's like, why don't we just do it with maths? And and math, it always works yep. better. Four X equals Z. That's fine. Is there a certain number of? There wasn't a certain number of threes that became, of, of twos that became three. I'm going to call it X Y Z. There weren't a, cer a certain number <laughs> of Ys that became Z because Z was less than two Y. But maybe you have, you have not tried them. this. You have but not tried this yet. We You've might get them. like the four Ys. Oh equal yeah, let's just keep going. Let's just keep doing something. Ys and Zs over and over and over again until they line up. Um, they do. After oh god, no, I need to do math. No, this <laughs> oh, is yeah, you happens. brought this maths to us. This is you know, it's all on you. Uh, You're gonna take the maths out before the room even got here. If you flip the middle one, sorry, if you flip Y over four times and Z over three times, at the end of those respective cycles, they will empty at the same time. Okay. And does, and just, just, for the, just for the sake of all the information, is there any point where X and Y, where the first one and the second one line up? If we just yes, keep turning Yes, after uh, three flips of X, uh, X and Y empty at the same time. Yeah, we could have deduced that from the other. Two oh yeah, I realized knew, we but didn't it's need good it. to know you that only it's need consistent. Two equations when you're doing simultaneous equations, but that's <laughs> fine. Four X, but yeah, you're right. It just it's a good way to check if we've been doing something yeah, wrong. Yeah. Four X equal to Z. Four Y is equal to three Z, which yeah means that three X is equal to Y. Okay, so it feels like we're dealing with the number twelve here. Would be a good one to go with for an LCM. Sure. So what do you want to do? You want to do... I need to... Well, yeah, hold on. I need to just... My instinct is telling me right away that we want to flip the first one, flip X 12 times. 12X would be equal to three Zs, which would be equal to four Ys. So if we just start them all at the same time, mm -hmm. but we keep them all flipping so that we flip it's the good thing X there are two of us. 12 times. We, click, click, we, click, so click, the click. triangles 12 times, the circles mm -hmm. four times, and the S shape thing three times, that mm -hmm. will have them all line up perfectly. And, say, and and then we forget to grab the paper. And then we go, ah, oh, damn. And then we start again. And we and we, and we do the whole thing again. And we grab the paper this time. <laughs> yeah, that works. Nice. The, paper, the piece of paper does fly out. And it's one of the notes that the professor has left you. And it looks something like this. I don't trust this professor. I do. Ooh, oh, we got um, more notes. A little hat. A little hat is love. Oh, so it's, a it's, bonnet. it's like a, it's like a, uh, yeah, it's like an upward arc. It's like a rainbow, but the points come together instead yeah. of staying apart. That's it. That is love. I'm going to give you. I'm not saying extra homework, but like, there is a way to figure out what the different symbols mean. So you do need to. You have the piece of paper. But in order to solve this sort of final puzzle, you do need to figure out oh, yeah. what's relative. And you should be able to do this using just the information that you have. Yeah. Figure out what's the difference between a uh, single circle and a double yeah, circle. Yeah, that's fair. And for the people at home, you can solve this using linear algebra. For the people at home who don't want to do linear algebra, you don't need to use linear algebra to solve But we did, and it was so easy. Made life so much easier. Um, okay. Okay. So, so if we know that y is three times x, I've now called. X. I've renamed them basic, three times basic, and four times basic. The use of basic and yeah. entirely unrelated to bases. We know that if we circle, like we have four things, and if we recircle two of them, we end up three times as much. 
and recircling three of them ends up four times as much. And also, the, our final test won't even have four things. It would only have three. So four things must be some kind of basic number already. I'm doing some, I'm treating now, I'm doing my own new linear algebra because okay. you can't escape it. Fantastic. Where I've called X a small circle and Y a double circle. That's a good idea. So I've said that like three times four small circles is the same as two small circles and two big circles, right? Okay. So yeah. 12X is equal to 2X plus 2Y, right? So 6X is equal to X plus Y. 5x is equal to y. So a, a, a double circle, if we, if we ignore their position entirely, a double circle is worth five little circles. Okay. That's an alternative way of doing it. So the first one counts up four, one, two, three, four. The next one counts one, two, and then five, five. So you end up with 12, which is three times as much. This is one of those things where I've got to write it down for myself. Uh... Mm. But if a double circle... Yeah. Is five, and it yeah, like I'm with you. Five is the same as five little circles. Mm -hmm. So on the third one we have sixteen, so three fives and a one. Sure. Compared to the original four, which makes sense. Makes sense. So it looks like a double circle is five. Now we haven't seen a triple circle anywhere, so I'm happy with that. So to me, that would imply that the number on the dais, which is a doubled circle and two single circles, mm -hmm. would equal. Uh, seven. That's I'm, what I believe I'm, the counting system is. I find is. that feasible. Hey, everybody. When they tell you to not use linear algebra, ignore them and just keep using linear algebra. Yeah, my issue that I was struggling with with this one was that I was picturing a double circle as a single circle that has been altered You're as right. opposed yes. to its own as symbol. Its own symbol, yeah. yeah. And also we have to ignore um, positionality. Potentially. Right? At least in this context. Um as uh, you finish, you get the piece of paper, as you're still working this out in your head, you also see one of the five streams that flows from this alcove towards the central dais flow up and fill up with water. Oh, exciting. Beautiful. I drink it. Oh, can you? It's surprisingly clean water, Bill. Wonderful. We you just wait to the end where I have... None of those uh, bugs have died in Atlantean this water. Atlantean superpowers and you don't. <laughs> All right. Shall we move on to uh, alcove number two? Let's move on to alcove B. You see that the professor has done some work here. There is some faint hexagon inscribed in the wall. And inside those hexagons are like six little divots. I will send you the picture now. Yeah, send us the picture. The hexagon on the wall has uh, sort of six little sort of cutouts. If you think about it, they're sort of like trapezoid shaped. And sure. the professor has written a English translation for each of these uh, six it. sort of nice. symbols. And lastly, on the floor, there's eight stones that you think would fit in each of these positions. That's um, what I thought. Yeah. Uh, Danny, would you like to describe the wheel and the stones? All right, so yeah, this hexagon, it's got these divots and the divots starting from the top middle and just going around evenly spaced. We've got spider, fish, snake bird, dragonfly, and octopus. But yeah, we have been given eight little stone tablets and only six animals. So we got to do some identifying Based mm. on symbols of things. Yes, and so the, the symbols at the I bottom, understand. the things that we can place, they all have the animal symbol on top, but then they're, they're full of little symbols below, except for one of them, which is just the animal symbol. Mm. Now, I would like to posit one thing. Given that we the, the type of animals we've been given, I would like to note that most of these have a bunch of little, those little L... Yeah, we've got some of those sevens. sevens that we saw in the, in, on the dais. Right. And they I, tend and they to be even zero numbers. Or eight or four... Or six, and I think those are going to be number legs. of legs. Those are clearly legs. There are two eights as far as I can see, and we have octopus and spider on mm. here. So I'm and happy so with that. And so, how do we also determine octopus to spider? What's the sim What's another symbol you see? We've Nanny? got water as occurring in a couple of these. Some of them have water in the middle. So, for example, the one that has no leg symbols, I would assume, is a snake. The one oh, that has yeah, no leg symbols. Oh yeah, just a straight up animal, no legs, yeah, no, animal with no anything. Legs, animal with no legs, but also water, I would assume, is fish. Makes sense to me. Animal with eight legs and water is probably octopus. Yep. Eight legs, no water, probably spider. So what's left? We've still got bird and dragonfly to consider. So one of them with six legs. Oh, only one of them has six legs. Oh, and something else is going on there. Yes. So what we assume might be the dragonfly symbol. Dragonflies have six legs. This thing has six 
uh, leg symbols. In the middle, of, I'm going to open this browser so I can zoom yeah, in. Yeah, please zoom in. What's going on there? It looks like a bunch Ooh. of tiny triangles. So it's got the oh, same. Oh, no. It's wings. It's wings. I wondered about wings. It has a bunch of things where you've got like three little loops uh, facing like upwards, not the downwards. opposite of water. Like Flipped the water. opposite. So flipping is a big thing because I saw one of hey. these as well in the base um, setup where we were given love, but one of the symbols on the dais almost looks like a flipped love. And I wonder. In a certain way, like it's got a, it's got a You're U, right. instead, yeah, and yeah, I wonder if that's yeah. hate or something. Oh no! Right? Okay, but we'll get back to it. So they have flipped water symbols, which mean sky. I'm assuming. How many wings do dragonflies have? Um, well, it looks like dragonflies might have six wings. Is that a true fact that we know about dragonflies? Yes. Also, I've done a lot of research, and there are things like double wings and technically not wing oh. wings. So dragonflies have six wings. Yeah. Wild. You know what? And if you don't think that now, because you're a biologist, Atlantean Atlanteans, dragonflies absolutely did. Wings, so get over it. <laughs> um, so that'll be dragonfly. And the one that has two wing symbols and two leg symbols would be the bird. Makes sense. Which has two legs, two wings. All right. So. So we can put them straight in. We, we've identified all of them. I, in... I, yeah. I just want to, what would the other ones be oh, that the other we don't ones? have? So the uh, far right at the top one just seems to be a land animal with four, with four legs. legs. Could be a dog. Could Great. be a cat. Could be a cow. Could be a... Wait. Oh, you said cat, not bat? Yeah, I said cat. Okay. The thing that is on land, it has four legs. I was very confused Could be a, a dog. Could be a cat. Could be a bat. <laughs> and the other one is four, a four-legged water creature. Could be a... a... Whichever of the seal or sea turtle, lion actually turtle. has back legs, a tortoise. turtle is even easier. Tortoise, turtle. Tortoise, tortoise terrapin. Tortoise, Perfect. turtle. Axolotl. What are we doing? <laughs> uh, crab. Crab? Yeah, yeah. A Let hideously tortured Let crab. A hideously tortured crab. Ah. Um, okay, well, this was great. I love this. Let's start putting tiles in. All right. Spider. Spider is the uh, top row, third from the left eight legs fish is second from the left on the bottom no legs and water snake is first top left yep no legs at all bird uh that is bottom left two legs two wings lovely dragonfly that is third from the left on the bottom nice an octopus octopus will be second on the top row which has eight legs and water great what do we know as soon as you slid in the last one, you feel a gentle shudder and another stream of water wa uh, flows from this uh, th this alcove to the middle of the dais. Get out of here. So I was so worried we're going to take as long on all of these as we did for the <laughs> first one, and I'm so glad we didn't. So we know that inversion... We should have we started with alcove seven after all. True. I also noticed that on our big golden door, that was actually very helpful for one of the symbols on it. Oh, the, uh, stuff that the we one that there. is animal with eight legs? Yeah. Spider. Someone hates spiders, perhaps. Mm. Although it isn't quite love inverted. It's not exactly the same as love, but inverted. No, not 100%. So there might be some um, we'll additional concept. Let's keep alcoving. We can Let's keep, keep figuring this out. Because clearly being in a circle is relevant. Because here we have like the, you got the a good three point. from a mount is not in a circle over here. So the mm. circle is going to be... Relevant somewhere. All right. Alcove 3. Alcove 3 is this one. You see another sort of little thing ensconced in the wall. And there's a bunch of colored blocks laying all over the floor. And the professor has translated a note for you that says, build a home. <laughs> and these are also little sort of um, slots in the wall that you can slit these uh, stones back into. Okay. So... These stones that we've got that we can fit into this wall are a few different colours, and some of them are split, either horizontally or vertically. A couple of them are bicoloured. Now, the other thing I noticed, so yeah, some of them are, like, there is one that is already placed in the brick wall pattern that we have been given. Yep, right in the centre. Right in the centre. It's purple on the left, it's yellow on the right. Not all of these bricks fit into all of these bricks. They are different shapes as That's well. True. So another thing that I think is an interesting starting point is that the bottom right brick of our layout is a very, very narrow brick. You're right. It looks like a singular. And, and the we've only, only got a thing singular. that can fit is a blue at the bottom, yellow at the top. Yeah. Single who's it. All right. Although presumably we could flip that to be blue. Can we, is that applicable or do they only fit in in one orientation? Could I put that in upside down so the blue's at the top? I would assume no. 
I would assume no, as right. well. Uh, that that you, helps. You can try. They don't quite fit. Um, yeah, no I don't problem. want to spend you like two and a half hours just turning blicks around, flipping them over, and it turns whatever, out so. they're actually trapezoidal prisms if you include depth, and so the yeah. the top is actually a bit for, course, goes a bit course. deeper than yeah, the bottom. Yeah, yeah. What's exactly, interesting about exactly. that is that whatever symbol is to the left of it, or sorry, whatever brick is to the left of it. Mm won't match it completely. No, that's impossible. So it must be only one attached colour needs to match. Assuming that matching needs to happen, because like, I was going to ask, do you think it's one where we need every brick has to match its neighbour in some or fashion? Every can't or match its completely neighbor. different, because that You're could right, be true it's one too. Or the other. I would start out by going, make them match I think we've got to make a match, because otherwise it, it, that reduces our options. I feel like I need to get my coloured pencils. I should just get the iPad. I can do colours in the iPad. Yeah, nice. Okay, everybody. I don't know how. I think all this preparation was just cut. So I have taken the image and I put it into paint and I've given my and I've I basically set up so hopefully I can mess around with the bricks, and I have dragged the little tiny the blue upside at the bottom, down skinny Ukrainian flag, the skinny upside down Ukrainian flag, into the bottom right corner, which is the only place it fits. So we now have two definite bricks: the original placement of purple on the left, yellow on the right. Mm -hmm. And we have this blue at the bottom, white, uh, yellow at the top. Yep. In the bottom right corner. So. So there's just a couple of different colors of bricks. There's a one that's just blue, a couple of that are blue and yellow, a couple of that are purple and red. There's one, a couple that are red, blue and purple, and yellow and red. Yeah. Right. So there's definitely there's, there's whole there's a whole gamut of, of of colors. But it looks to me like if we wanted to put something to the right of this purple yellow brick, mm -hmm. the only option. Is this yellow blue? Oh, it might be. That does because, look like it could be the only one that's the right size. It would be touching the yellow to the yellow, and it's the right size. There are two others: red on top, yellow at bottom. But they're long. But they're long, and they're not going to fit. So I'm going to grab this brick, and I'm going to try and place it right in here. Oh, it slots in so well. It slots in perfectly. I'm happy with this that. This is the sort of puzzle that I want to include in my rooms, but I go, well, I don't know how to make that, and I don't know if our guests will have any programs that can do this, but I want to be able to do this more. Yeah. Now, it looks to me now that the only thing that could fit to the right of it would be one of our big solid blues. I like that. Select that big solid blue. I'm going to slot this guy in. And what do you think about to the left of our original starting block? I don't think we have many options for that one either. So it's got to have purple Two touching, options, presumably. Suppose. Yeah, to me, we would either take the one that's blue on the left and purple on the right, mm. which fits into that space and has purple on the right, or we might be able to take the one that's blue at the bottom, purple mm. at the top. I'm now trying to look at, like, what could fit in the very top right? Only the little blue guy here. Not the little blue purple? Does that not fit? I think that's going to be that too big. top left? I think this, You're right. I yeah. think that's true. So the only one that can fit in the top right is blue at the top, yellow at the bottom. Okay. Which means we need something that's got to fit next to it because it's currently not touching something that matches it. No. Well, should we put that blue-purple one on the top left? Yeah, because it looks like, again, shape-wise, we can fit that one in. Mm. So blue at the top, purple at the bottom fits in the top left. That looks right. Hey, everybody, we're building a wall. It's an audio podcast. I hope you're building a wall at home. And if you're not, I hope you're listening to us build a wall. <laughs> now, <sighs> what I will note is even though what we put together in the middle is like very much color touches color, purple with yellow and then goes yellow and blue, mm. then goes blue to blue. Yep. That big blue doesn't match with the ones that we put above and below it. It does not. The bottom right is blue at the bottom, yellow at the top. So it's yellow touching blue kind of weird. Well, it could just be that we just pay attention to them row by row for the moment. Yeah, maybe let's pay attention to it row by row for the moment. Because so far what I noticed, we haven't done any sort of flipping at this stage, if that makes sense. Like our starting rectangle had some vertical stripes and the one that we placed next to it, also vertical stripes. Oh, so we have a yellow true. vertical next to a yellow vertical. So maybe let's like... Let's stick with that. Let's put this blue left, purple right... And put it in that middle row. And then the full blue. And then would full have to blue to the left of it. Let's it. just do that. Worth a shot. And if it doesn't work, uh, we'll quit. Because <laughs> you know what's interesting? Were you saying that the blue, as we're placing it, sort of matches the color of the outside wall? 
Yeah, so it kind of fades away. So it's not as important, I would say. We might end up with a message at the end. I think we will, made out of the other colours. Okay, well, so for example, the top left, which is currently horizontal blue-purple, the only square that matches it in any way that would actually have the colour continue touching would be red on top, purple on bottom. I think that's true, and and I would like to place that. Let's do it. And I shall. Does that mean on the, on the on the top right, next to that blue on top, yellow on I bottom? I want the red. We put red on top, exactly. yellow on bottom? That's what I want. I think that sounds great. And then a full red goes in the middle. Okay. okay. Well, now we've just got one uh, short boy left to place. We've used all the other short boys. Short boys. So we've boys. got purple on top, blue on bottom can go at the far bottom left, right? Purple on top, blue on bottom goes at the far bottom. I see, because it's the only one that fits into that square. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So we basically place the four corners based on their geometry. It helps. I see what picture we're making. What? Oh, you're, oh my God. I see what we're making. Okay, well, it let's... It's starting to elucidate itself. Like, I can just place these ones in. I go, bonk, right, whoa, well, no, sorry, no, I don't. be purple. We grab the purple red. on top, red on bottom. We grab full, the, the yellow on top, red on bottom goes in the bottom right. All right. So how would we describe the image that we have formed? What I, what it seems like, so the, if we ignore the blue, we treat the blue as negative it space. It is wall. We have a purple backward C. Yep. To its right, we Ooh. have a, oh, he's given us a final version. Yes, nice. A, a yellow backward C. I don't know how we interpret the red above and below them. Are they, are they close enough to being parallel lines? Or oh, something else going on. Do the red seem they kind are. of par- Okay. So it's a home for people. With a, with a, it's a building with people in it. A building with people in it makes which sense. Which is a home. We built a home. The symbol for people inside the symbol for building, which we got from that water one as well, was water inside parallel lines for a well or something. So that's teaching us about, like, put one symbol inside another. Great. To merge their meanings. Uh, that. Yeah, I see that water inside a building was one of the symbols on the door. On the dais, yeah. Gotcha. So this is people inside a building as a home. Perfect. Very nice. And okay. as you've slid in the last block in place, you hear that another stream of water flowing uh, from this alcove towards the central dais. Uh, you're over halfway. Hell yeah. Alcove four. This looks to have the ancient Atlantean equivalent of a rotating number lock. And they're sort of sticking out of the wall. Nice. The professor has left you a little helpful note. And there is a sort of starting position for the uh, combination locks. There's three enormous wheels right next to each other. And they look something like this. For people at home, uh, the note from the professor. Danny, could you read it? I can't believe it. We finally cracked the code. I can't believe this ancient civilization has a lock that so closely resembles those made in the modern day. And that they use the code 627. And then, Well, that's pretty sus. Okay, so it's currently set to vertical line, vertical line, vertical line. Three tumblers, each one a vertical line. Uh, can we tumble them to their to next see our setting options? to see, and sure. see what all the options are? Yeah, for sure. I'm going to send you the next one. So the next one looks something like this. The second symbol, it is two backwards. The wait, no, two just normal threes. threes two sort threes. Of. All right, uh, let's keep flipping through this first tumbler to see all, well, all its options if that's practical. You keep going through them. I sent you the so next this one. This is a backwards three, but the bottom is kind of closed off. It's like a backwards capital B, but missing half its vertical line. Yeah. The next one looks something like this. Oh. This is a backwards three with a huge vertical line coming off the left side of it. It's a flipped and upside down F with one too many prongs. <laughs> Ooh, and the next one Ooh, is a, a big circle. That was labelled as amount question mark. Yeah. That is a large circle with the backwards three inside it. Next one is just a circle. That's good to know as next well. Next one is just a circle. It's oh, the then three. it's two backwards, it's the backwards threes. threes. Then we get this one. Oh, hey, that's the one what? that I said looked like upside down. Uh, yeah, we're getting a, a lot of stuff from the door in this one. And this is the final one. So there's nine in total. Okay. And that one is just like the F with too many prongs, but a real, a normal F this time. But we somehow have to translate these to 627. 
and yes. Professor Armsaw isn't going to be any help because he's I'm like 15 minutes away. If we checked the second Tumblr, it's the same series yes, in the same yes. sequence. Yeah, yeah. Great, 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 great. So our symbols, to recap for everybody playing along at home, are vertical line, two threes, a backwards three with the bottom right closed off, a backwards three with a big stick on the left side that's taller than the three, a backwards three in a circle, just a circle, two backwards threes, a U in a circle. A bit like a tennis ball. And then a backwards three with a big line on the left, but it goes down instead of up. Mm. As if we took that previous one and flipped it vertically. Yes. Which would make it the opposite of what it meant before. Yeah. Now, there are some numbers in our standard numeric system that if you flip them in certain ways, resemble each other. Mm. Do we have the same sort of thing going there? Like, are the forwards threes and the backwards threes actually like two and five because they're horizontally flipped versions of each other? Or again, does Atlantis have no yeah, concept of Why would Atlantis know about our numbers? Because that is interesting. Like, are the, are the three on a stick flipped one way or the other a six and a nine? Yeah. Or it could just be like a, let's count how many lines have been used for this, that sort of thing. But then the circle ruins that. I mean, yeah, because a circle is one line or zero sides or whatever, you know, so it's one line. The vertical line is one line. A lot of them are also like variants on each other. So mm, could... we basically just have three base symbols, right? Vertical line, circle, and three. Mm. They're the sort of the, the, the bases that we have. Yeah, you, you don't know a lot about um, ancient. Uh... You know that English is kind of, I think the professor has mentioned this, that it's English is like a distant cousin or happened way it was developed or developed, has evolved after the Atlantean language, but you're not 100% sure. Mm. I don't know. Danny, do you think, like every time you saw, you would see this in a, um, in a normal context, the numbers would run sequentially. They would just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, and maybe I'm, our issue here is not knowing where it started. Do you think we can assume that, or should we not assume that they're sequential? I would not have assumed that. So what are we thinking? Where do we want to start and continue? I, I think it's a good idea to say vertical line, circle, three are our base symbols, and see what has happened in each one. Sure. So first of all, we do just have a vertical line. Next one is two threes together. Next one is a backwards three mm. and a vertical line. Next one is a circle and a backwards three. Mm. Next one's just a circle. Two backwards three. Then what do we think? Oh, no, that's a new symbol. Yeah. You're right. That's got a U. That's, that's got that U inside mm. it. That's a whole separate thing. We have four base symbols. And then backwards three plus straight line, but flipped. Yeah. My base assumption when it comes to things like these is trying to figure out where where do they tally things? Like often it will be great. You've just got a symbol for one and then you will add on to that. And then potentially like sometimes there'd be a symbol for five, but based on this, I don't see any symbol for two if we just go from one. So maybe it's like we take the one and the O and maybe the U, I don't know. And those are just like one and two and something. Yeah, it could be. So I think of our base symbols, we would need a one and a two if we're treating them like just additionally will get us all the way up to nine. Sure. If that's true, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it could also be that we have a one and then two is just adding two ones together. But we don't have any symbol that's adding two ones together. That's why I've said that. Because we have a three, we have symbols that are two threes together. Oh, sorry. I see what you mean. Yeah, you're right. I was definitely pre-assuming that the one vertical line was one, even though... Because even though consciously I was telling myself not to assume that, I clearly still was. Mm. Cool, cool. Okay, so yeah, that could be true. And that's just why I started on the one to be a bit mean. Like, oh, it's clearly yep. a one, right? Yeah. It makes, oh, it makes perfect sense. It's completely valid. That's on me. So you think maybe like the three, but... But the it can't be thing... because there's, it's never by itself. Right? Yeah, the only thing we have by itself is either the one or the O. Yes. So I would assume that either the one or the O has to be their base unit. I would assume that. If that's if it is this sort of additive sticking things together. It is one of these things that's hard because it is like um 
th- there are so many possibilities for what it could be. You have to sort of keep trying until you hit the wall. Like when we were trying to do the time, our big problem was that we assumed that the position was relevant, but the position turned out to not be relevant at all. Like in this one, where there's a lot that we're assuming, like two symbols together would add their values, but it could be there's like, oh, no, that doesn't, no, they're just some symbols are made up of other symbols. You know, like that's, that's an assumption. It might not be right. True. But outside of adding, I suppose subtracting. <laughs> but you do, get, yeah, you do get the sense that because they're only sort of like these tumblers, these are in sequen- sequential order. That's something, that's a fair assumption. Oh. Okay, we can assume sequential order. Oh, I wasn't okay. sure if we could. That's nice. Okay, we can work with that. So yeah, it is, you, you do know that Atlantean is sort of the pre-predecessor of English. You know, they're connected in some way. You've probably, yeah. and I'm going to give you another little sort of clue. Please. If you look at the two freeze and the two backward freeze, those symbols I could have swapped around and the logic behind it would still work, if that makes sense. How did you describe that tennis ball looking thing? <laughs> a circle with a U inside it. Yeah. Oh, is it that they very heavily resemble vowels? Is that relevant? We've got an I, an O, an E, and a U. Oh, so hmm. they're English vowels. Maybe numbered in, we don't have an A, do we? I do not see an A. No. And four has an O and a U in it. What? And no letters have a... Oh, like the word for. Yeah, like the O with the E in it. Oh. So the O with an E in it is actually the O and the E of the word one. Oh, my God. The O is just the only O that is present as a vowel in the word two. The two E's. Seven. The two E's are seven? Seven has two E's in it. But also we're going in order, aren't we? So oh, does okay. three. Sorry, I didn't know you were going in order. I thought you were just going. The two E's are three. Then the O-U together are the vowels that are part of four. Oh, my God. And then the I and the E is five. The I is six. The two E's, but they've popped up the second time. To distinguish them, the two E's are now flipped to make it seven. Mm. So they're E's, but flipped just to distinguish them from being a three. The E and the I, where the E is to the left is eight, because the E is to the left mm. of it. The I, then the E, becomes nine. Yep. I assumed this was going to wow. be its own number system, <laughs> but it's the English number That's system. That's wild. With just the vowels. How All long right. it took us to recognize them as vowels. Well, yeah, it just didn't feel like it was going to... Stupid three was ruined like, everything. Yeah, like we had to sort of assume that they sort of had the, 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 the English... Like now makes it because before when you were saying like oh that's it's like a precursor of English I was like there's no way that makes sense if these are symbols that are meant to look like the numbers but it was like linguistically pronounced symbol that's fun okay so what we want if we want six two seven that means the first one we want the vertical line yep the second one we want just the O yep and the last one we want the two normal threes two normal threes two backwards E's perfect yeah as you do the the, the fourth stream opens up and everything works. Uh, seems to seems to go smoothly. This is definitely one of those puzzles where some people see it and like, oh, it's six, seven, eight. It took them like less than two seconds. It was amazing. Absolutely. And other people are like, oh, it could be this, could be this, could be other things. So it's kind of fun to see. All right, perfect. We're moving on to the second to last puzzle. These are a series of, in the fifth alcove, you have a series of painted glass things, like, um, what do you call them? Stained glass uh, okay. in English. And you can fit these and slip these inside of like a wooden box. There's room for three of them. And there is a light coming from one direction. It's sort of projecting something on the wall. And uh, the professor's lesson has left another helpful note. And he's asking you to make the word marriage. (laughs) Marriage. Okay. Marriage. We were told, did we just say we could only fit three of them? Like yes, three of, three of the six. Cool. So looking at these symbols, we have six of these symbols mm-hmm. here. Each of them different colours in little sort of squares that are all attached together. Mm-hmm. The first, do you want to swap off describing what they are? Oh, we can try. Sure. You can start with the first one. It's probably a bit easier. <laughs> okay, so the first one, we have a square. As if it was a four by four square of little squares, but with no middle. It's just a path. Uh, so we've got, if we start at the top left, 
and go downwards, we've got a full L shape. So it goes down four and then across all four, all in yellow. From that bottom right corner, which is itself yellow, the three squares vertically going up from that up to the top right corner are blue. And then the two in the top middle that I haven't mentioned are red. The second symbol is like two parallel lines, each four squares across. The first one is yellow, yellow, blue, red. The next one is white, red, red, red. Mm -hmm. There are additional little embellishments. They are joined at the second position with a single white square. So between the second yellow and the, and the red of those two parallel lines, there's a little white square joining them. Mm. And then below the third square of the bottom line, so white, red, red, that red has a blue underneath it. So the two parallel lines with a couple little shapes coming off the sides. Third one, again, all of these seem like they are at their basis, a four by four grid, but some just don't have squares yeah, there. So I suppose you okay, so this third one uh, goes empty. I'm just going to read them across, like going sure, sure, four sure. by four in their rows, top to bottom. Blank, yellow, yellow, blank, white, blank, blank, white, blank, red, blue, blank, blank, yellow, yellow, blank. That makes sense. So then the, the next one is red, blank, blank, white, blank, red, red, blank, blue, blank, blank, blue, blank, yellow, yellow, blank. Fifth one is red, blank, blank, red, blank, yellow, yellow, blank, blank, red, red, blank, white, blank, blank, red. And the final one, blue, 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 white, white, blank, blank, red, white, blue, blue, red, white, blank, blank, blue. Now that we've Looks solved like the puzzle a. of uh, describing it, what do we do what with the, how, how trying did, to make the how terms three of these Now, when we put three of them in the sort of window alcove thing, is it like one, two, three from left to right? It'll be this, then this, then this in an order? Um, it's a light shining through all three of them. So if you have, for example, a yellow piece on top left, a blue piece behind that, and nothing underneath, you get like a little green square projected. Okay, so we're laying them on top of each other to create one final image. Okay. And we want it to be marriage. Mm. How, how much information we need to know to, to know their symbol for marriage? Yeah, that's true. Do we know what their symbol for marriage might be? Mm. Like, do we want two people and, and love? We have a symbol mm -hmm. for love. Mm -hmm. Doesn't even need to, like, uh, I forget, was the symbol that we had, that we knew from the start, person or people? It was people. Okay. People. We don't need to narrow it down to two. Yeah, maybe the, uh, some combination of the symbols of people and love. Yes. Now, here's my problem. I don't know how to combine those two symbols because they're both just a bunch of curves and, and we also, are very square. You don't need love for marriage, I suppose. Yeah, we, we need person and, oh, uh, and a political alliance. <laughs> England and France, yeah. You've got to really delve into Atlantean political history here. Because, like, if I'm going to draw out, people were the two seas where the butts of the seas faced each other, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Love was a big... Upside down U, mm -hmm. and inside of it, sharing its bottom points, another little upside down U. Mm. Could you say, for example, that the final symbol in our list of symbols here, not its colors, we ignore color for a second, but just its shape, is the shape of the love symbol? Like, I've, made, I've just made a, a sad oh, face. Oh, man, that's really like, sad. I mean... Like, it's it's kind of like the squariest way we could get to the love symbol. It's a bit pixelated, but it does scan, I would say. It does scan. Cool. Great. Okay. So that's that's. So if we have, like, a full top row, a full third row, and then two verticals, basically looking like a capital A, that's sort of the love symbol. Okay. Whereas... I can work with that. Like, and to make people, it would be like if we had... Would you say that the fifth symbol, the one that's, like just the corners and the four blocks in the middle, would that be a good way to, to, to say people? It seems to me, based on the fact that that A is the love symbol in its shape, but not its colour, it seems to me that actually we would probably want to take this fourth symbol, but add in the top, like have a full top line, a full bottom line, and the fourth ones in the middle. Like so... What do we end up with if we combine the last two symbols together? If we combined the last two symbols together, it to me seems like we would have a, a, in a four by four grid, 
it would go purple, mm. blue, blue, red, mm -hmm. then white, yellow, yellow, red, then white, purple, purple, red, then white, blank, blank, purple. Mm. So there's one more symbol out of these six that I would say you also recognize from earlier. Mm. Okay. Uh, the square filled could be the number two. Mm -hmm. It's like a big O. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Um, that's okay. three symbols. What happens if we put those three symbols together? What sort oh, of image do we get? So we don't need a... Yeah, okay, I get it. I get it. So if we put in the big square, like the first symbol, which is a large square of various colors, yeah, the fifth problem. symbol, which is kind of like a, it's, it looks like two C's facing each other, and the marriage symbol, uh, and the love symbol, which is the big capital A, and we put those three down, we would end up with, and we can, we can map it out, we would end up with uh, yellow, red, so it would be, oh no, you've drawn it, I was going to draw it. Oh, I'll delete it. You can draw it. Ah, oh. uh, no, you've put it in there now. It's put it. I see. So it would be in the top left. It would go yellow, red, and blue becomes blank. The next one is red, nothing, blue. So it would be purple. Then red, nothing, blue, purple. Then blue, red, nothing, purple. So if we continue that pass that that um process over and over again for each of the lines, adding up the three different colors in each position we end up with another symbol, which is the symbol for marriage, That's which fine. turns out to be, in this case, a purple C, sorry, a purple backward C and a yellow forward C interlocking together, mm. which we have seen on the door. The we dais have. has that symbol. That means marriage. Exciting. That helps us translate the door. So now we've done all five alcoves, right? You slid in the final piece of glass and the water starts flowing. The, the door almost starts to tremble a little bit. It's, it wants to open, wants to open so badly. <laughs> you only have one final code to crack. I'm going to look at this day, so I'm going to tell you what I think all these symbols are, Danny. Yep. First one is three. Yes. The next one is, I don't know, well? A water building of some sort. I'm going to write well. The next one is marriage. Mm -hmm. The next one Seven. is... Seven. seven amounts or something like that. Just, it's seven. just the number. It's just seven time. Well, so, yeah, seven time. Well, yeah, just because it's not the same as the numeric You're three right. that we got elsewhere. Seven, and I put in brackets time. <laughs> then it is four, mm -hmm. spider. Three, water house, marriage, seven time for spider. Hmm. Hey, Danny, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Oh, this is a curious finish. Okay, uh, Waterhouse is a, a famous horse trainer? I mean, where? <laughs> That's true. Gail Waterhouse? Uh, Gay Waterhouse. Gay Waterhouse, sorry. Yep. Gay Waterhouse is a famous horse breeder and trainer, so we're looking for three of her. All right. I mean, there's a lot of water flowing around here. We are in the Waterhouse. Three Waterhouse? Who has married a seven times? Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> So we've got Gay Waterhouse. Four spiders. We've got Elizabeth. <laughs> and who is four spiders? Uh, four spiders. In a trench coat. In a trench coat. I have you no idea who any of these people are, but go right ahead. <laughs> no, I'm not surprised. Oh, come on. We're right there. What are we going to do with this? We have three, seven, and four. We have a well. We have a, we ha The seven is time. It's not the number seven. Mm. Perfect. It is not the number seven. It's like seven seconds. We have to get married for seven seconds? <laughs> To a spider? Four spiders. Aren't you guys already married? Yeah, it's been more than seven seconds. We can never get out. <laughs> Three. Is there any other water building that isn't a well? A bucket. A bucket's like a little water building. Yeah, what, what is a... Aqueduct. I would recommend trying some stuff. Well, yeah, that's my, that was my other question. Is there anything that we can do in this space? Like, yeah, we've got a message. Sort of interact can we interact with the door? Is there any way to touch it and prod it? And you see that there it? are sort of three, um, what do you call latches almost, that are sort of ensconced in these next door? I set the so. latches to three well, seven time <laughs> marriage, and four spiders. What? They are, they are, they are latches, Damn. so they're kind of stuck uh, in a closed position right now. But you can definitely, like, interact with some of other stuff. You don't, you don't really need to, but. I mean, when you say, like, what can, can I just open the latches on the door? 
No, they're stuck here. They're stuck okay, but there's position. three of them. So it's like these are three separate concepts. Mm. Each one would unlock one latch, perhaps. Okay. So like three well unlocks its own latch. Okay. That Can makes I go sense. to the the third of these aqueducts that we have activated, bringing water into the door, and search it, stop it, cover it up, do, just interact with it in whatever way is possible? If you do that, one of the legends opens. Wait, what was that? What did you do? Three aqueduct. I found the third of the five aqueducts. And you which, just messed just with messed it. messed with it. All right. So what are you thinking that we do with the other ones? Like, there were bugs we... crawling around. Can we mm -hmm. find four spiders and crush them? Oh. Absolutely. And as soon as you do, the second latch opens. What is happening? I don't know. Now, we need to get married for seven seconds. Danny... We have to sing the ABBA song, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, but then also add two more I do's. <laughs> I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> Will the door open? The door opens. What? Oh, nice. uh, you're not sure how that works exactly, but it's a close enough interpretation. Um, so the door opens, and behind you, you will find all the riches of Atlantis. Congratulations, you have solved the room. So this was just like a, like a mass wedding dowry being hidden behind here. I guess so. Along with the ritual sacrifice. I don't like these Atlanteans. <laughs> They're weirdos. I take none of them to Professor Billington. But smart, smart. You, you know what? I don't know what country we live in. I give him enough to cover his medical bills, should they be real. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Escape This Podcast. Don't forget to tune in next week for Podcast This Escape, where we debrief with our guest and discuss the escape room that we just escaped from. <laughs>